overall rating, the 2023 Honda DAX is a 1970s icon reinvented for the 21st century. All the DAX style is their V12 inches wheels, chunky tires, T-shaped frame and high swooping bars, but now benefits from the largest capacity engine in the model's history. The modern version is great fun to ride and cheap to buy and run, brilliant alternative to a conventional scooter. For the uninitiated, the Honda DAX story began in 1969 with the original ST50 and ST70 DAX. THE name comes from the bike's passing resemblance to a dachshund, sausage dog, and the model plate on the side of the bike features a picture of said hound. Ride quality and brakes. The ride quality of the new DAX is far better than that of the originals. First-generation DAXs feature spindly suspension and tiny drum brakes whereas the ST125 comes with 31 million US dollars forks, non-adjustable, a box section swing arm and twin shocks, again, non-adjustable. Brakes are now disc front and rear. The front is a 220mm disc gripped by an ABS-equipped twin-pot caliper, the rear a 190mm disc with a single-pot caliper. Both are very effective at hauling the ST125 to a rapid stop. It weighs just 107 kilograms fully fueled. Ride quality of the 121 30 section tires is good. The deeply padded seat is also very comfortable. But the bike's diminutive size, modest weight and tiny wheels can make it feel slightly flighty and unstable at times. Its size can leave the rider feeling vulnerable around lorries and other large traffic, too. Engine, the 124 cubic centimeters, air-cooled, SOHC, four-stroke, two-valve engine is the biggest ever fitted to a DAX, but it's very quiet and smooth. A meager 9 brake horsepower power output means a very low state of tune for a 125 so reliability should be excellent, Plus Honda have made millions of small capacity engines by this point. The 4-speed gearbox is easy to use, there's no clutch lever, it's a centrifugal setup, with a tow heel lever to go up and down the box, although using the heel change can be a hassle for those with larger feet. Town performance is good, top speed is 55 to 60 miles per hour, so it'll keep with a road traffic, but overtakes are beyond the ST's capability. The gearing is set up to be brisk away from a standstill, so it feels perkier away from the lights than it does on the open road. Reliability and build quality, too early to say, but the overall build quality looks good, and reliability really shouldn't be an issue given Honda's long history of building SOHC singles, not to mention this engine's modest level of tune that can only help its long-term prospects. Mechanically, there's not a lot to go wrong with simple components and no fancy electronics to worry about. The Stomp transmission has been used on Honda's Cub and Super Cub models for decades, too, and should be tried and tested by now. The paint finish on the DAX's pressed steel frame slash bodywork looks good quality, but given the budget nature of some components, a coating of ACF 50 or similar might not go amiss to keep the rust out. Value versus rivals, a DAX 125 will be cheap to run. Monthly PCP payments are under 50 pounds, economy is 90 MPG plus, and insurance will be modest in Group 5. There are a few competitors to consider with several from Honda's own range. The Honda Monkey 125 is the most similar in intent with its 60s styling and diminutive stature. The Monkey looks more like a scaled-down motorcycle with a traditional frame and tank, and it costs a few hundred quid more. The identically priced Honda C125 Super Cub is also a contender with retro styling and the same gearbox setup as the DAX. A more modern take would be the Honda MSX125 Grom or any of the multitude of Chinese copies now on the market. The Grom looks like a scaled-down version of a modern naked roadster and lacks the retro charm of the other bikes in the list. Equipment, there's never going to be a great deal of kit on a machine like this, but the ST125 comes with a neat digital speedo and fuel gauge, chunky easy-to-use switchgear, decent mirrors, LED lights, pillion provision, ABS on the front disc brake and cast aluminium wheels. 
the DAX's retro minibike cousin, the Monkey, has a luggage rack available in the accessory catalog and presumably there will be a similar option for the DAX. Model History 1969, original ST50 and ST70 DAX launched, featuring the same SOC, 2V engines as the immensely popular C50 and C70 Cubs. Launched as a fun bike, and soon caught on because of exactly that. 1972, DAX got bigger with launch of ST90 Mighty DAX, engine from the C90 Cub. Styling tweaked slightly with spoked wheels, hydraulic forks, and trail-type high-level mudguards. 1973, CY50 Naughty DAX. Custom styling with a conventional fuel tank, balloon tires and Z50-type engine with upright engine block, a different unit to the previous Cub-derived engines. 1981, DAX Honda. No longer on sale in Europe, USA and Japan only. Custom style seat with high back, raked forks and a return to the more familiar T-shaped chassis. 2023, DAX relaunched with all new and biggest capacity yet as ST125. Disc brakes, USD forks, larger, stronger chassis. The Honda DAX makes a comeback. Honda has revived its DAX minibike in the form of the new ST125, a 21st century version of the ST50, ST70, and ST90 machines that were defining models of the 1970s. While the single-cylinder model has only been revealed in Europe so far, there's a strong chance it will be coming to the States in the future. The revival of the DAX is part of a minibike renaissance for Honda, who rediscovered the format with the MSX125 Grom in 2014 and has been mining that seam ever since. The MSX itself has since spawned the Monkey 125 as an authentic tribute to perhaps the most famous minibike of all, and the new DAX follows in its footsteps. The original DAX ST50 and ST70, which was sold as the CT70 in the States, were created specifically with export markets Europe and the USA, in mind, making their debut back in 1969 as a follow-up to the 1967 on Monkey. In fact, it was the American market that inspired the bike, asking for an enlarged version of the Monkey to better suit Western physiques, as well as the ability to carry passengers. Just like the original, the new ST125 DAX takes its main components from the Super Cub, which these days means a 124 cubic centimeters SOHC air-cooled single attached to a four-speed transmission via a centrifugal clutch. While both the Grom and Monkey share the same engine, the current iterations of those models have a conventional clutch and five-speed box, so despite its similar dimensions and shape, the semi-auto DAX promises a markedly different riding proposition. We won't dwell on performance for too long, that's simply not what these bikes are about. For the record, the DAX makes 9.25 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and a peak of 8 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPM, numbers that are understandably within a whisker of the Grom, Monkey, and Super Cub that use the very same single-cylinder motor. Top speed will likely be somewhere around the 60 miles per hour mark, so while urban traffic won't be a problem, faster roads might prove daunting. Just like the original DAX, the new model's engine is slung beneath a T-shaped, pressed steel frame that hides the fuel tank and all the electronics and wiring, making for a clean, unfussy look. With the tank in the top frame rail, it's understandably limited in size, one US gallon is all you'll get in there around half a gallon less than will fit into the monkey's tank. Even so, since the DAX is good for a claimed 150 miles per gallon, that's a lot of potential range between fill-ups. The DAX's frame means there's space for a longer seat than the monkey's, and like the original that means there's room for a passenger, who gets a chrome grab rail and their own foot pegs. Those pegs are even mounted on hangers extending from the frame which is an upgrade over the original DAX, which had them bolted directly to the swing arm. Despite the extra space, the new DAX is just 2 inches longer than the Monkey, coming in at a compact 69.3 inches overall. It's still a lightweight machine, 
coming in at 236 pounds, only 7 pounds more than the Monkey 125. As well as the Grom's engine, the DAX adopts the Grom's five-spoke wheels and front and rear disc brakes, representing another much-appreciated upgrade over the cable-operated drum brakes of the 1970s models. There's even ABS and an IMU to monitor and prevent rear wheel lift, something that's inevitably a concern on a bike with such a short wheelbase and high center of gravity. As on the latest Monkey and Grom models, the DAX's fork is a 31mm upside-down telescopic unit, although it lacks any adjustability, while the steel box section swing arm is suspended by two non-adjustable coilover shocks. Despite the retro looks, there are modern touches including a set of LCD instruments hiding inside a trad-looking circular dial, it's the same setup as the Monkey 125, and full LED lighting. In terms of other visuals, the Euro market version of the new DAX comes in two paint schemes, red or blue, with the DAX name on a band around the tank and the ST125 branding on a side badge that also features a helmeted dachshund on wheels. DAX is short for dachshund, reflecting the idea that the bike's long frame and small wheels give it the look of a wiener dog from the side. Officially, the DAX is a 2023 model and it's not due in European dealers until May this year. A US market version seems sure to follow, not least because the original DAX was designed specifically for the States, but also because America has proven to be a huge market for the Grom, showing that the appetite for minibikes hasn't diminished. Prices have yet to be announced, even in Europe, but it's sure to be very close to the Monkey and Grom in that respect. Thanks for watching.